Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. Uh, this time, we're going to talk about couplers. How many is too many? Can you use too many? Well, yeah, you can. Question is, is where is the line on these guys? So don't go away. We're going to have a Fluke DSX 8000. We're going to do some testing, and I'm going to show you exactly where things fail. Don't go away. The first test we're going to run is what's known as a permanent link test. And that's characterized by these tip ends here that plug into keystone jacks. Uh, a permanent link test is a pretty tight test as far as parameters are concerned in the standard. And we're going to be running a category 6A permanent link test because you're using category 6A cable here. Uh, we're going to be using keystone jack couplers. Uh, they are impedance matching component rated, so we're giving this the best possible shot. So with the two keystone couplers basically serving as keystone jacks, we're going to test our permanent link. The permanent link is the cable between those jacks. And we're going to go and actually see if this permanent link works. And then we can start introducing couplers and see where the permanent link fails. Takes about six to eight seconds to uh, test. OK, so not unexpected. Uh, the permanent link parameters allow for uh, two uh, terminations at the end and uh, a cable in the middle. So not unsurprising. However, what if we introduce just one more coupler? What happens? Generating diagnostics is never a good sign. Okay, so in the case of a permanent link test with CAT6A, uh, just one coupler inserted into the middle of a permanent link, uh, in this case, was enough to fail the test. Um, not always, but in this particular case, uh, it did. So my recommendation is uh, no couplers in the middle of a permanent link. We're going to loosen up the uh, testing parameters a bit to what's known as channel testing. Now, channel testing is what like the Fluke Link IQ does, um, and it basically just it, it's doing most of what you need it to do to tell you if something's going to work right. Uh, the permanent link testing is for certification; it's a lot stricter and tighter. So we'll switch over to channel testing, switch out some adapters, and uh, see how many we can get away with at that point. We just have one coupler here. And it passed. So we'll leave this coupler intact. And now we're going to start adding couplers. And if you add couplers, you have to add cables, which means you're adding RJ45 terminations. That's, you just know that's not going to be good, right? OK, so now we're ha we have two couplers. And let's see what happens. It passed. So the more permissive channel test allows passes. However, what if we had a third coupler? So we're adding in not only a third coupler, but we're adding in a couple more RJ45 terminations to boot. So I mean, you just. Stuff's going to go start going sideways here at some point. We now have one, two, three couplers. Generating diagnostics, that's not good. Ooh, that's no good. Best practices, no couplers at all in a permanent link. Um, best practice for overall channels where you're using patch cords or something like that, 
no more than two couplers. Otherwise, stuff's going to start falling apart. And was the issue because of the coupler? Is that what caused the problem? The answer is no. Um, the answer as to why uh, things started falling apart and failing is because of each RJ45 termination induces a certain amount of electromagnetic unbalance at the termination. And that is accommodated for in the specification. And so when you start getting more RJ45 terminations going on in there, you eventually will exceed the specification, even if you're using a really loose test like a channel test. Okay, so there you have it, using a Fluke DSX-8000 to see how many couplers you can get away with um, in various types of situations. Uh, if you like this content, please leave a comment below, give us a thumbs up, or if you didn't like us, tell us why, give us a thumbs down. Um, subscribe to our channel, please, and go to truecable.com, visit our Cable Academy, where you'll find uh, many additional blogs and videos, Just and they're all hosted on YouTube, but you can go and look at the written uh, blogs as well, which have detailed pictures in some cases. So with that, I'm going to say you have a great day, and happy networking.